morning. Welcome to Viewpoint, your program of personalities, <laughs> politicians, and perspectives. We have, well, we have uh, personalities and perspectives with us this morning. I guess. Thank God the program will stay sane today, as long as we don't have the politicians with us. Uh, we always try to start kudo, Don and Ms. Davis, uh, with the, we always try to start the Viewpoint with a kudo or two. And one was right up here in her own backyard. And uh, that would be uh, a young lady with the name of Susan Hobwood, who was recently named 2020 Philanthropist of the Year by the Illinois Prairie Community Foundation. Now this is a big deal. This young lady is right in her own backyard up here. And uh, I would point out that the word philanthropy encompasses a lot more than just giving of your own monies. It's giving of yourself and your time, your thoughts, uh, your dedication to your community. And those are the uh, qualities that uh, Susan brought to this award. And so it gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, offer a kudo in the direction of Susan Hobbit right out here in her backyard. And by the way, uh, Judith, you might not realize this, Susan is uh, chairman of the Golden County Board, of, uh, Lincoln College Board of Trustees. Oh. And uh, she'll be a doggone good one. We're happy to have her with us. Another kudo. We had uh, a young man in our studio the other day Tommy Brewster, yes, author, author. Uh, I just finished reading his newest book, uh, *Road to Florida*. Dixie. Uh, I found that a fascinating read. Tom is a good writer. Yes, he, writes, he is. He writes with insight. Uh, and he's a nice man. Well, he is that too. His wife says so. So. <laughs> well, that's important. <laughs> but seriously, uh, uh, Tom Brewster's book is out. Uh, it's uh, for, you know, now on the shelves. Go to the library and, and uh, get a copy. You'll have to take it back, of course. Uh, uh, yes, you could go on on the internet and uh, find Tom Brewster's book, The Road to Florida Dixie, and it was very interesting reading, and kudos to Tom. Now let's get serious. We have two nice people who have given us their time this morning and their talents. Of which they there. have very little at yeah, this point. Yeah, right, exactly. So let's introduce our guest this morning, Judith. Yes, please. Um, Don Cavi is the administrator at the Logan County Department of Public Health. Right, and with him that. is Kara Davis, and she is the director of nursing. And I don't know how you're keeping all the balls in the air. It's just got to be tough. This virus has affected everybody in the known world to some degree or another, and certainly the two of you as much as anyone. Uh, Kara, now tomorrow is another day for you out at the fairgrounds. Maybe we should begin by talking about that opportunity for people. Yes, so um, we have been having drive-through COVID testing at the Logan County Fairgrounds every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 to 11. Tomorrow will be the last day for the drive-through um, because of the weather. It is starting to get colder out and it's just becoming more difficult to um, do the testing out there. So what we are going to be doing is three to four days a week for an hour. Um, there's an, different hours every day. I will be taking appointments and people will be coming to the health department and they can be tested there. Yes. Um, the dates and times will be on our Facebook page and on our website. Um, and I've sent it to all the school nurses and different people in the community. I you know, heard just recently that the, that the new uh, quick tests aren't as reliable. What's your those. take on that? We don't use those. What we use is the nasal pharyngeal swab that's uh -huh. provided to us by Illinois Department of Public Health. Um, and then we actually drive the tests down to um, their lab in Springfield. Uh, so we, we don't do the quick test here. So I can't answer to that. Nothing gets lost in, in the translation. No, then. it does not. You know, <laughs> I just mentioned all the, the, the community work that... Uh, that Mrs. Hobwood has done up here. Uh, in the same manner, while it's a paid position, we recognize that, and certainly not enough at that regard, but uh, you you described before we went on air uh, the, the difficulties of administering these tests at the fairground. Uh, a lot of physical discomfort. Uh, so let's go, just expand on that just a minute, uh, Kara. Well, it's actually gotten a little bit better because this week the temperatures outside have been great. 
Um, but the attire that I wear when I do the testing is uh, a gown and then an N95 mask, a surgical mask, and a face shield, and then a glove change with each test. When it was hot outside, that was difficult. It was mm -hmm. a difficult uh, couple of hours, but as it's gotten nicer out, it's a little bit better. Last week it was cold, so the gloves were hard to go on with the hands being so cold. <laughs> I'll be darn, yeah. Um, but that's why we're moving it to where I'll be able to be inside and not outside except to perform the test. So have you had pretty good easier. numbers go through the fairgrounds? You know, we have. Um, we have done around 4,000 tests, just myself alone, um, since we started. The numbers have of people tested have started to go down in the last few weeks. I'm not sure why that is, um, but um, I still want to have the opportunity for people to be tested. If, if they want to or if they feel they need to. But CVS in Lincoln is also doing testing. Um, there is, you have to register online and there is some different, you have to be 12 and there's some other um, qualifications you have to have to be able to be tested there. And that is also free of charge as well. Have you, are you at liberty to state uh, the number of positive cases that you have uncovered? that I have uncovered. I don't know the exact number um, for sure. Don can tell us how many um, we have in the county, um, but not me particularly. And uh -huh. I guess I take that back. It wasn't, this. it's about 4,000 tests that I've done. My goodness, that's a lot. It's still yeah. a lot. <laughs> That is, feels like 7,000. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the past, we've had Mr. Cavie give of his time and his certainly his talent to come up and visit with us about what's going on there on 3rd Street. Uh, Don, how long have you been with us there at the health, Golden County Health Department? It's actually going on 11 years. I started November of 2009. And the workload has got nothing but heavier. Well, yeah, and you know, our, our staff has been reduced. I mean, we had, oh, I know when I started back in, in 09, we probably had over 40 people working at the health department. And when I took over as administrator, we were down to 34. And then uh, just because of various department cutbacks, we're down to 20 employees now. So we're, uh, but it's not only me, it's our staff. You know, they, they're really, everybody is having to learn to be more flexible and to um, take on other responsibilities. So, um, you know, it's I'm a surprise you're having f fewer people. Uh, we've never had, uh, to my knowledge, anything like this coronavirus. This is just over the top. I should think you'd need more people. We have uh, th received grant dollars um, for, through the federal government for our programs and we haven't been able to bring in um, actually we have a, a couple local doctors uh, uh -huh. Dr. Kesa who used to be on our Board of Health and Drs. Willing who are graciously volunteering their time they're coming into the health department assisting our nurses um, making phone calls and doing some follow-up work for our nurses and then we also brought in a uh, uh, an ISU student uh, to do our contact tracing and she's there full-time right now so thankfully to the, the grant dollars we've been able to do that and the grant funding has been able to uh, make it possible for us to go out and do things like the testing and some of the other COVID related uh, <laughs> response activities. You know we're, we're lucky, very lucky here in this county to have the Golden County Health Department. Uh, a lot of people just kind of go about their daily activities and don't think too much about what's going on out there on 3rd Street but every day you open your doors it could be a new day and uh, uh, that's kind of trite to say it that way but uh, new activities and new, new challenges every day you open that door out there yeah. and uh, uh, staffing and a budget uh, you have ever present business of paying people uh, are you okay in that department uh, it's always gonna be a challenge but we're, we're holding our own right now um, yeah, the, you know, the budget is always going to be the, the issue. And I don't think anybody works at our health department for the pure sake of money. I yeah. think they have to be a little more dedicated than that. Right. And we see it. Gene and I only know about the health department because we get our flu shots there. Yeah, you know, and it's not just Logan County. It's statewide. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, when you look at our state budget, which is, what, $42 billion dollars, and between 97 local health departments, 
the total amount of money that we get from the state of Illinois to be divided between those 97 health departments out of a $42 billion budget is $19 million. Um, so I, I calculate, I believe it's like far less than one tenth of 1% of our total $42 billion actually, actually goes to pu fund public health. And, and then when a pandemic com occurs, um, the state in Springfield's expecting all the local health departments, oh, you got to do this, 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 this. And we're like, well, with what? Yeah. Right. And that's the problem. You know, now they're throwing all this grant money at us, but they're saying, well, you can only use it for this. You can't use it for all of your activities. You can, it only has to be specific to contact tracing or something like that. You know, if they're going to offer us $800,000 and say it has to be used just for contact tracing, why don't they just... Why don't they just give us eight hundred thousand dollars so you guys spend it on what you need to do and then use some of that for future responses? Because if we ever have another pandemic down the road, I'm only I'm speaking on behalf of not only us but other local health departments. Where are we gonna have the money to respond to this? Is is Springfield gonna have to scramble again for all this money and then and go to the federal government? And you know, I, and you can't blame the federal government. They're they've thrown billions of dollars at all the states. You know, it's just. Um, but then again, it's frustrating because, you know, here we are, here's all this money, and you, oh, you only can use it for contact tracing and contact tracing related activities. I spend a lot of my time doing other activities that aren't quote unquote contact tracing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it'd be nice if we had some, some funding, some additional funding for that. So um, I, I really wish that people at the state level, it seems like they only appreciate us when there's, when there's a pandemic. Um, but it would be nice if, um, we'd be recognized every year um, and if more of that annual uh, more of those annual dollars came went to public health rather than just 19 million dollars because you know less than one tenth of one percent of 42 billion dollars that's that's how much our state values public health and it's pretty disappointing well you know in the sovereign state of Illinois we've long been famous or infamous uh, for money management uh, in Springfield. You jest. <laughs> yeah. I already made my comments. I'm done now. I better oh, not go any further. Quitting, with that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the only answer to the problem? Is, yeah. is, is the business of the distribution? Um, well, I, again, I think just more, I think more funding needs to be funneled towards public health departments and especially there's a lot of disparities a lot of the downstate health departments get very few dollars compared to some of the other counties mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you know their their um, tax levy is even lower so I mean they're so they're hurting all around a lot of the smaller health departments are, it's a struggle you know for, and for the listeners with sharp ears that was not a siren you heard that, was, that <laughs> yeah was, that was a studio yeah. cat <laughs> yeah, but you know, I will say this in terms of local funding. And I, our, our county board and our, our board of health have been extremely supportive. Um, I can I'm thankful for every dollar we get from them, and I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever about um, how our co county board has been uh, supporting us. Well, how, as you talk with other administrators in in public health. Uh, what is their outlook? How long do they think we'll be living under the rule of the coronavirus? Well, you know, every meeting I go to, everybody doesn't know. That's a, that's the scary part about this. And, and uh, you know, for all we know, depending on how the election turns out, <laughs> could end sooner than later. I, I'm just kidding, of course. But, um, you know, we're we're optimistic we're hopeful that you know by next year and and if if you know but if if we can't find a solution and or a vaccine that's going to work there's no telling how long this could go on um so really that's that's a big question mark that's a good question you ask and and well, uh, just today on the news, they were talking about there were four vaccines that are being tested currently, and uh, they thought that that might bring about some hope. What do you think? Well, uh, I'd rather have four that are being tested than one that are being one that's being tested. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I. I think it's it's somewhat optimistic, but you know you have to be somewhat guarded too because you know the, most vaccines, when they're released by the um, FDA, they're they're tested for you know several years, mm -hmm. and um, just 
to see what the long term effect of the vaccine will be. But with this vaccine, you know, they're talking about a year, year and a half later. Um, so, you know, there's a concern out there that people have that, you know, how safe is this? Because it really hasn't been looked at in the long term. Um, so that's that's the big issue. And I talk to a lot of people. I, I ask people the same question. What do you, you know, what is your thought about the vaccine? And, um, you know, about half the people I talk to are like, I don't know, even know if I really want to get it, you know, and um, because I'm not sure, you know, I'll wait for it is what they tell me. Um, so I don't know. I'd have to look at, you know, once I do release a vaccine, I'll have to look at it good and hard and, and you know, Fair make enough. an assessment on my own. This probably comes under the heading of a trite question, but the advent of COVID, does that change your personal workload significantly at, at the county health department? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, personally, yes. I Well, I'm doing the testing, which is something I had That's never a big time. done before. But yes, and not only my personal workload, my nurses. My nurses are very busy. Uh, Mary Anderson is our communicable disease nurse, and she that's all she does right now is um, COVID. I want to say uh, something to you about your nurses. You've got a good staff out I there, do. young lady. Yes. Our our only acquaintance with the uh, whole kind of health is going in there and getting her health shots and moving out of there. It's seamless. It doesn't take any time at all, and they're always so doggone pleasant. And uh, it, it's it's just kind of an interesting thing to do. Uh, for instance, uh, we didn't see Mary Anderson from year to year, but it's always a pleasant time to see her again. Yeah. And uh, you, so I just want to commend uh, your staff out there for the way they handle their many patients. Uh, Don, uh, we still have a dental department out there? We do. They're through uh, Southern Illinois University, their uh, federally qualified health center. So they're still in our doors, mm -hmm. uh, and they're still seeing. Has patients. that worked out rather well? I think so. Uh, they're still seeing. They're still maintaining their patient loads. Um, when we when we had the dental department, we had over five thousand dental patients, and I believe they they still have five or six thousand maybe even more people oh, in their staggering. in their clinic so they are there is a huge need for dental services uh, especially when there's a huge percentage uh, the vast majority of dentists don't take Medicaid uh, which you know uh, the SIU will basically they'll see the people that are underserved so it's a huge gap to fill and we're just glad that SIU is able to come in and fill that gap I suspect it goes without saying that a great number of this four or five thousand are folks that might not see a dentist on a regular basis. So look at the good that's doing out there. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah, and again, you know, dental conditions could lead poor dental conditions could lead to other health problems. They're finding that heart disease and cancer and other diseases can be a result of poor dental hygiene and so you know people need to um, really take a proactive approach in making sure that they're uh, um, that they're getting the dental services they need even if they don't think they need it but you know getting their teeth cleaned and all that um, that's important you do have relationships don't you with with uh, institutions of higher learning that help out we do they're part of the public health system uh, uh -huh. you know we're we work closely with the other administra the administrator associations in the state, the Illinois Public Health Association, and they work closely with, um, like the, you know, U of I and and, and other universities, um, you know, ISU, uh, SIU, and you know, I can go on and on, but um, yeah, we do. We the universities uh, play a huge part in, in uh, public health, and I know a lot of them are actually testing their students right now. So which are is they? good. So uh -huh. yeah. once again, Judith, we fooled around here, and it's almost uh, 35 minutes, uh, 25 minutes to uh, nine o'clock, and. Uh, we haven't come up with a commercial yet. We better take a few minutes' time, Mr. Ash, and honor our sponsors. Right back live in the studios here. The program, of course, is Viewpoint, appearing each Wednesday morning, uh, 815 to 0900 hours. Our guest this morning, we have two good guests that are serving us in, in, in a public way. Uh, Kara Davis, who's the head of nursing out there at the Logan County Health Department, and Mr. Don Cavey, who has his hand on the tiller of the Golden County Health Department, is trying to steer it and 
keep it pointed upstream, going against a tough current these days. So uh, these folks have given their time and their talents, and we appreciate very much your coming up with us this morning. If you have any questions this morning, uh, 648-5510. I'm going to repeat that again, 648-5510. Uh, if you have any questions and or comments, but be very nice to them because they're public servants. Judith Kay, go right ahead, my dear. Yes, you were just mentioning that there seems to be a problem with uh, the water supply. Well, I did want to bring up, and I because I, I go back to the environmental health days, that was where I started at, uh, at the health department here. Um, but we had... Uh, some uh, well, as most people in the Atlanta area know, the art, the uh, Muhammad Aquifer, is where most people get their drinking water from out of their well, especially um, well throughout. But um, we have had, and, and this has been reported, and we've ha we've seen tests that you know arsenic levels in the water uh, have been higher in the in some areas of the Muhammad Aquifer and I I talked to the water survey and they said you know more of it is concentrated west of Interstate 55 and we did um, just west of here in this general area right here mm -hmm. uh, look at a lot of different homes and they had their arsenic levels tested and the water was high um, somebody in the com somebody here in the public notified us and that's why we looked into this and this is going back and we did send press releases out and we do have information on our website but if people are living in and around the Atlanta area um, that get their water from the Muhammad aquifer and they if, especially if they're drinking it should uh, consider having their water tested uh, before they drink it just to make sure that the arsenic levels are not too high um, so we want you know this is something like I said and I, I want to revisit it because it's something we have notified the public in the past but this is always a good opportunity now for your listeners so uh, if they want more information on arsenic in drinking water uh, on our website if they go to www.lcdph.org then go to our environmental health page and under the water uh, water safety potable water program we got a full section on the Muhammad aquifer with a map uh, showing where the aquifer actually goes through Logan County so we just want to make sure that people are aware and people are safe especially if they're drinking out of their well typically if you drink your water out of, a, of your own well you know it's a good idea to get your water tested annually anyways and um, where is that done at the state uh, state level down in Springfield well the state level and and as a health department if there's a new well that we permit and we go out and inspect it we will sample that well and we send those samples to the state but they test for coliform and E. coli bacteria but arsenic levels have to go to a private lab. Uh, uh, there are labs. There's one in Springfield and there's one in, in Peoria um, that people can send their, la their water to. And if they go to our website, I have that information in there. Um, there's a, an attachment they can open up and it has the information on which labs can test for it. How does that happen that arsenic would be in? Just naturally occurring. Uh, in terms of old and, age. Yeah, and it's been linked to cancers and other various ailments. So, well, um, yeah. Yeah, so I, we just want to make sure we get the word out and then just to remind people that, you know, there's there's always that risky assume drinking from your own well. It's your your well you're responsible for it. And, um, you know, now, so. if, you, if you boil that water, that, does that help? You no, know, boiling will kill the, the uh, bacteria, the viruses. But the uh, certain chemicals, it's not going to do anything. If anything, no. it could make it more, uh, more toxic because when you boil, you're going to evaporate some of the water out. It's going to concentrate yeah. it even more. So um, boiling right. will not work on it. We're not suggesting this is Flint, Michigan now, so don't everybody get rid of it. <laughs> no, panic no. On this. Uh, Mr. Cabbage just simply pointing out the advisability of making sure your well is producing potable water. Simple as that. Yes. But we don't have anybody that's polluting us around here. Uh, at Burton View, had real good water. Did they? Uh, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, Miss Davis, your home was uh, uh, before you came to uh, Elkhart. No, I live at Mount Pulaski. You were a Mount Pulaski girl. Yes. The hilltopper. Good. Yep. You got some good blood in you then. <laughs> <laughs> Great people over there. Uh, by the way, they've done a lot with their uh, uh, museum over there in that courthouse. That's just yes. a nice thing. That and here again. It's local people putting their shoulders to the wheel and pushing and getting things done. It's not letting for somebody from the outside to come in and do this for us. So you 
be proud of your heritage there, young lady. Oh, I am. Uh, go, go ahead. My grandma actually started the museum in Mount Pulaski. Is that oh, a fact? Oh, really? Yep. My grandma did that. Well, bless her heart. Yeah. Was she always interested in history? Oh, yes, very much so. Yes. Uh -huh. She actually wrote two uh, genealogy books on uh, the oh. history of our family, and then she helped start that museum. So. Oh, neat. Now, how, neat. did you get any of that? I do enjoy history, but not near as much as she does. Uh -huh. yes. Well, you are a little bit busy right now. A you little bit, yeah. You don't <laughs> have a, uh, the advent of COVID, coronavirus, changed your workload almost immediately. Am I correct in saying correct. that? And has it affected staffing? They're very busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have added a contact tracer to um, our staff who does call all of the known contacts of a positive case. She started a few weeks ago and she has been very helpful in helping us. Yeah, I can, if I could add too, um, and I know Kara, she's in agreement. I, obviously, her staff, as she says, are very busy, but they're still trying to maintain normal business as usual too. Which is, you know, we we are offering the flu shot now, um, and back to school uh, shots right now. I think what's the deadline? October fifteenth mm -hmm. for that. Yes, very uh, much so. Flu shots are in uh, high high force right now we've been very busy doing flu clinics and trying to get people in for their flu shots so yes we do have those um, unfortunately we used to have a walk in where you could just walk in and get your shots now we are requesting that you call and make an appointment just because we don't want very many people in the building at one time right. Makes and sense. we will actually come out to your car and give you your shot as well so you don't even have to come in the building um, and then we're doing different flu clinics around the county. Um, now Pulaski has uh, two this week, one on Friday from two to five at the library and one on Saturday from nine to 12 at the library. Next Thursday, I'm not sure what that date is. Um, there is one in Elkhart at the library from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Be the 15th, I the think. The 15th and then, yes. And then, um, the health department in conjunction with the hospital, um, we are doing a resource fair at the Oasis on November 2nd, and it is a drive-through. It is from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. We are also going to have a flu clinic there as well. There will be also a lot of local uh, businesses, um, extended care facilities, um, the hospital, ourselves, handing out uh, different resources. Uh, we're gonna be handing out thermometers. Uh, I'm not sure what everybody else is gonna have, but I think there'll be some goodies. And you don't even have to get out of your car. You just drive. Through. How easy can it be? I know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about the flu season? What are they forecasting for that this year? I don't know. I know Blue that they're do. very much encouraging people to get vaccinated, um, and that is because we don't know how it's going to react with uh -huh. being here as well. And um, I can actually say that I have given flu shots to people this year so far that I have never given a shot to before. Is it, they're so, running scared. Huh? They are. And, uh, one, uh, one particular individual um, is, a, is an older lady from where I live in Mount Pulaski, and she says she hasn't had the flu shot in 20 years. But she just she thought this year she better get it. So I did. I did give her a flu shot last week. So. You know, um, I think we're a little confused about the masks. Now I thought that your wearing a mask would protect others in case you've been exposed, so that you're not infecting the rest of the world. But now there are a lot of people think it keeps you from getting exposed to the virus as well. Is it both? What's the deal? It's, it's both. both. It is. Yes. Sure. If it, if it, it prevents you from transmitting, it also prevents it from inhaling. So it's very good. You need to wear your mask in a situation where you cannot maintain a six foot distance. You need to wash your hands. Definitely wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Um, and try to stay away from a large groups of people, especially with now coming into flu season. Yeah. Um, we're dealing with that as well. So people are going to be in allergies. Um, that's why I'm a little congested today. I was sat outside last night, and so I've got some allergies going on. But um, very much mask wearing, hand washing, and don't touch your face. 
very important. Yeah, they they mentioned that don't touch your face business. They aren't kidding, evidently, huh? No, and it's crazy how much you touch your face whenever you're actually thinking about it. Like, I can't believe the first time I went out after COVID, I touched my, I couldn't believe it. I just kept wanting to touch my face, and I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> and Don, you said that you had another issue that's reared its ugly head in addition to this arsenic and drinking water. Not really. I, I well, actually, I just want to vi- revisit, and because we did talk about funding, and I just, I just want to emphasize, you know, we have received a lot of money through the state through the feds and I will say I do appreciate that and we do appreciate having that funding being able to afford to bring in you know people to help our nurses and our contact tracers but I really hope that through COVID that it really opens up a lot of eyes so down down the road future years that um, our political leaders do realize how important you know maybe this opens up some more eyes and people realize how important public health is and that we really need to sustain viability and be strong so when the next if we ever come across another another pandemic we're ready to hit it head on rather than scrambling around and we don't have money for this we don't have money for that because it really was a mad scramble this year is really what it came down to well uh, this has affected everybody in the known world mm -hmm. you know in one way or another yeah nobody is exempt absolutely absolutely and uh so this you know we we just hopefully it'll change things for the better so down the road you know public health departments will be better equipped and and ready to respond right off the bat rather than saying you know we need funding for this or how are we going to do this uh i remember uh you know early on in this we were we secured through the county we worked with lincoln college and they let us use one of their um it's the uh it's abandoned nursing home what's what's that Uh, st clara's yeah and uh you know, we were told that, you know, if, if we have to house people in there to isolate, then, you know, the health department needs to staff 24-7 and we have to bring people in. And, and then it just opened up a whole new issues like, okay, how are we going to do this? You know, we've got, you know, X number of people on staff. How are we going to be able to staff that 24-7? And, um, you know, we were able to secure the, the, the old nursing home, but thankfully we never had to use it. And, you know, thankfully... Logan County is is at a a stable level right now. I think right now there's like 28, close to 30 counties that are at warning level. We've been able to uh, stay at the uh, stable level, which is good. Um, And we hope to stay that way and and hope to improve that. You know, the the advent of us having the Logan County Health Department there on 3rd Street. Uh, By the way, folks, uh, you, you ought to know the address of that. What is it on the right off? It's on 3rd Street, but what is the number there? It's uh, 109 3rd Street. Right out there behind Carroll Catholic is be, Correct. be the way to put that. Yep. Uh, the advent of our health department had to be a, a, a terrible, adv- nice advantage for a certain number of folks in our community. Some of who would, wouldn't see a doctor, maybe for nothing more than economic reasons, which is a heck of a big reason, by the way. But so uh, the advent of, of having a health department open to all of us uh, was, should be a, a, a real big factor. Do you do you have people regular uh, regular patients come in for things that are peculiar just to them? We well we do. We have a lot of regulars that come in. Uh, just for instance, a lot of people come in just to get their blood pressure screened. Right now we're we're asking we we call ahead or we're not even we're just kind of yeah we're we're we had to back off on that due to covid like you know what else is new but i don't need that yeah Yeah. but we do offer a lot of free service if people come in and 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 we'll do that the nice thing about what we're doing now is and and public health has had a stigma over the years is you know if i'm if we're on medicaid that's where we go to get our services on our immunizations really we are we're there for the entire community and we we bill private insurance uh, so we're we want to change that we want we want people when they need their immunizations to come to the health department um, if they need a, a lot of the other services that we offer and all they 
to is go to our website and we've got all of our services listed there um, and we do work with the medical community I know Carol will tell you we a lot of doctors offices will send their patients to the health department to get uh, their services um, so uh, which was not available to them until we opened that how long has it been open now how many years you know what next year will be our 50th year technically <gasps> really I think the referendum was passed in uh, 71 I know we're we're about ready to celebrate our fiftieth. Believe it or not. Oh gosh, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. I remember when it started. In fact, I I was honored to be on that board. Maybe it was fifty years ago. Mm -hmm. I was younger than Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get there. I, uh, at my age, I'm not going to touch that with an eighty foot. You know, they're talking yeah. about uh, one. If you've gone to uh, this state to visit, uh, you you're probably on the list because some states are having a bigger problem than others. Um, now I think Wisconsin was one, and I'm thinking Missouri was one. Is that true or not? There is um, a web. You can go through IDPH's website, and there is a map that is updated very frequently, and it will tell you the states that are higher risk. Um, we just recommend that if you do go to a higher risk state, that you are either COVID tested when you get back, um, or you um, monitor your symptoms for two weeks, and you monitor your symptoms for two weeks after you get back. Mm -hmm. A lot of schools are not letting the kids go back to school if they've been to one of those states until they've been tested if they're aware of where they went. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use the word oh. nurse. Excuse me. Go right ahead. I'll, I'll back off. You go with your no. question. You're, oh, let's you're sit vice and argue about it. <laughs> you're vice president. You take you take over. <laughs> I forgot where I was going. <laughs> I could, I could, if I could add one thing, and, and Kara give you a lot of great information, and, and I'll just add to that too, because CDC, I think, also has a, a map of the okay. U.S. Of, of the states that are, are high risk right now. But uh, I did some research for our board, and I found, too, that Johns Hopkins University, I want to make a point of Johns Hopkins, uh, they have an outstanding website and they are tracking literally down to the county every county in the u.s what the death rates are what you know really? every little just about every little stat on covid for counties i've been able to look that up for logan county and our death rate is is lower than our surrounding counties right now and and you know heaven forbid you hate to hear about deaths we've had three now um you know but it, it, it at least you know we're keeping it to a minimum um we never see, want to see that go up, but right, you know. But it's that, through that research, you know. I, Johns Hopkins University, outstanding website. Let's enumerate the symptoms before we run out of time, please. This, yeah. well, COVID symptoms. They've added, haven't they? Over <laughs> oh, yeah, they've right. added more and more symptoms. Um, so a headache, a very uh, usually it's a very bad headache that just so, something you've never had before, kind of a headache. Really. Um, the congestion. So allergy-like symptoms, um, sore throat, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. So it's muscle aches. Um, you could mistake it for any number of yes. things, like the flu, for like instance. Allergies, because in our area, allergies. This is allergy season. Uh -huh. Everybody in the fields. I mean, it's yeah. It's it's pretty bad with allergies, and um, I know that some of the people that have had symptoms have had a, a sore throat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they thought maybe it was just postnatal post -nasal drainage from allergies, and they ended up being testing positive for COVID. Now, I'm not sure how to phrase this. Uh, our nursing home facilities, I hate to use that term, nursing home. They but our care. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I knew, I knew I'd get a professional answer to that. Um, uh, do they work in conjunction with the health department? Oh, yes. I know where I live. I'm at the Christian Homes. Yes. And they're doing an excellent job on that campus of, number one, trying to be very, very careful about being around one another. Masks are certainly uh, uh, advised. They're practicing a lot of social distancing out there. Uh, but more and over and above that, they keep us informed as to what's going on on the campus so there's nobody with a big question about it. Uh, 
And I presume some of the other senior care facilities, uh, do, they, do they report into the yes. uh, Oak County Health Department? So Mary Anderson is the contact person for the schools and the extended care facilities, mm -hmm. and she speaks with them very frequently. Um, I know two nursing, two extended care facilities in the county test their employees and their staff, their staff and their residents weekly. Um, so that is happening, um, and then we are informed of any positives um, from that, and then we assist them with guidance on what the next step should be taken. How more accept susceptible are we old people to this COVID than Joe Smith walking down the street at the age of 55? Well, any time that you have age on you, unfortunately, that is going to make you more susceptible to anything. Um, just because your immune system isn't as, you know, up as a, a child or even a, a healthy adult, a healthy middle-aged adult. Um, so it is, it is more, you are more susceptible. That just seems so wrong. I mean, you've had so many more years to, to build resistance. She's sitting here, Don, look at me right in the eye, talk about old. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, if you look at the death, if you, well, actually, if you look at the death rate um, for COVID, it, the average age is falling in the 50s and 60s, which is, um, but the people who usually have, usually, because there are those exceptions where they don't have any um, pre-existing conditions but a lot of times it is people who have a pre-existing condition that it is affecting more than anything cardiac disease for one. Oh my goodness gracious I have a pre-existing it's called a clock condition I just looked up <laughs> our guest this morning Kara Davis and Don Cavi representing us the Golden County Health Department we appreciate very much Kara and Don you taking the time to come up and talk with our visitors out there on the airways both of them uh, we appreciate having you be, be with us this morning uh, do you have any final comments you'd like to make either well we just you know want people to stay safe and and uh, follow you know wear the mask social distance we can't remind people enough to do that you know we did find ourselves sliding back up a month or two ago and we want to make sure that the numbers are down if you go out in the public uh, wear a mask by all means and social distance just use common sense so we want to encourage people to do that and we also want to encourage people to continue to use our health department services if they if they need to get their immunizations or or any of the services that we offer just call our number 735-2317 and uh, press zero to make an yeah. appointment. And we do appreciate the public utilizing our services. I um, also want to shout out the Illinois Department of Public Health, who's been a real big support to the local health departments as well. So performing a very, very serious and, and needed service here in Golden County, Don Cavi and Kai, uh, <laughs> testing one, two, <laughs> Ms. <laughs> Davis. Uh, for, thank you for being with us this morning. Thank yeah, thanks we for having appreciate us. Appreciate your taking your time. Thank you. Uh, be the reason someone smiles today, folks. Thank you for Viewpoint.